Hello. <laughs> what are we filming today, guys? Bond or... Or the indie stuff I was talking about, or... Ah! Oh, there's no place like home for the holidays. So, a couple of years ago, I sat down and watched all the Home Alone films. And at the very end of that, I said, Disney are apparently working on a reboot. And I, I honestly never thought they'd actually go ahead and do it. But the Filthy Animals made another Home Alone film. And as an aside under one of those videos last time, I mentioned that I was going to review the next Home Alone film. And all hell broke loose. Jesus. Sounds like I'm going to have a strong reaction to this film. So I sat down and I watched the sixth. Home Alone film. And... Uh. So I sat down and watched it again. Uh. And again. What a shit movie. Why does anyone like that? Especially for a Christmas movie. No, that can't, sorry, that's not right. That's... Oh, that's my review of Love Actually. <laughs> oh, oh, Booby. Oh, it's such a great Christmas film. But, oh, you, you wanna go? You wanna go? I mean, I wish I could get that passionate about this movie because I've seen this movie like four or five times now and it's barely impacted me at all. Yeah, I'm surprised like Disney haven't done a welfare check on me at this point, to be honest. And you might say, why did you have to watch it so much, Tom? Why didn't you just review it? And it's because I don't know what to say about it because it's different, but not necessarily in a good or successful way, which we'll get to. And you might say, so, okay, where did the movie lose you? And really, pretty much straight away, with the title, Home Sweet Home Alone. Home, Home Sweet Home Alone. Home Sweet, I guess, I don't know where to put the emphasis. <laughs> it's just something that I can't say, that Home Sweet Home Alone. It just doesn't seem natural, you know? I think they accidentally left a scene in the movie that's them trying to come up with the title. Home. Home is where the heart is. Sweet Home, Alabama. Homer's Odyssey. I mean, it also just sounds like something like a lonely single man might say when he comes into an empty house. Oh, home sweet home. Hello. Well, that was a depressing look into my future. It's weird though, because I feel like this movie should actually work. Going back to the basics with the series and updating it for a new generation. And it's got a phenomenal cast of comedy actors. Rob Delaney, Ellie Kemper, Chris Parnell, Keenan Thompson, and Nick Frost. And that's just to name a few of them. And it's weird, because it also has a lot of reverence and respect for the original. There's a lot of nods and homage to the original film. Giving up yet, or are you thirsty for more? You guys give up, or are you thirsty for more? Little Nero, sir, I have your pizza. Good job, buddy. Good job, my love. I mean, it's also got weird homages, like Scareface. Little kids come get down. Ah. Axel Foley. We'll wait till it gets dark. We'll go around back. Okay, Axel Foley. And O.J. Simpson. Is it really a crime to steal something that was stolen from you? Yes, that's what O.J. got in trouble for. The second time. What, the kids don't like OJ anymore? If you're not a fan of OJ at all, don't worry, we got plenty of orange soda on tap. In fact, it plays a pretty important part in the plot. And that's my first big problem with the movie. Why did you get Keenan when we're talking about orange soda? Kel loves orange soda. I do, I do, I do, I do, ooh. <laughs> I mean, could you imagine? People would have gone crazy in the sin sitting room. I forgot, this is a Disney Plus movie, so everyone stopped talking about this movie like the week after it came out and forgot about it. Which I guess actually puts it in good company with the other Home Alone sequels. Okay, if we're going to talk about plot points, I guess we should talk about the plot. It seems like it'd be pretty important, right? But it's also where the controversy starts. See if you can figure out where. Our movie follows a lovely young couple called Jeff and Pam who are struggling to make ends meet and may be forced to sell their house, which they have so many family memories in. So they host an open house that's gay crashed by Max, played by Archie Yates, and his mother Carol, played by Ashling B, so Max can use the bathroom. But while there, they notice an antique selection of dolls which they tell Jeff could actually be worth some money. And when Jeff finds the most rare and valuable of the dolls missing, he assumes Max must have stolen it. And while he tries to resolve things peacefully and properly, he's left with little option but to break into the house and steal the doll to save his own home. Oh, and Max is home alone. I didn't mention that, sorry, it seems... <laughs> 
of course he's home alone. Why wouldn't he be? So, did you catch where the controversy was? It was pretty early on, actually. You might have missed it. Can we get a replay on that? Our movie follows a lovely young couple called Jeff and Pam. A lovely young couple called Jeff and Pam. Jeff and Pam. That's right. Home Alone, a series traditionally about children, is now about... Adults. You probably should have guessed it from some of the weird adult jokes in this. Little boy doesn't want to share his dolly. Excuse me? Ah, I get it. You're one of those guys. What do you mean? I don't know. You tell me. I don't know. The guy Jeff saw looking through my underwear drawer seemed interested. No? Don't touch me, Pam. I'm your sister. Homebot, such good booby traps. I'm sorry. The parental controls of this system restrict the term booby. Never mind. All right, Internet. Show me your words. Well played, Mum and Dad. That's a minor league. Kevin got to see some titties. Now look, credit where it's due, I love when a film takes a swing, and God knows after five other Home Alone films we needed a fresh take. But this ain't it, because making the robbers sympathetic, making us actually want to see them kind of save their home, means that the traps don't work the way they should, because in all the other films, it's the bad guys getting their comeuppance, whereas watching this one, you're like, Leave that young couple alone, you little shit! And look, we'll get to the traps, because they are the best thing in the film. Not because they're really good, but just because the rest of the film is filler. But I guess we should talk about some of the filler as well. For example, this is the first film in a long time to take place... ...in Chicago, in the original continuity, sorry. I mean, it does take place in Chicago, but it's in the original continuity. Meaning, we get the return of the OG. The kid we all wanted to be, the bad boy, Buzz! They couldn't get Macaulay Culkin then, okay. Buzz is back everybody! <clears throat> and you know what's kind of sad? That nutcase, that bully prick, grew up to be a police officer. Man, don't your streets feel safe already, Chicago. Actually, the saddest thing might be that things never worked out with Buzz and his girlfriend. No ring on this finger, ma'am. No one's been able to tame this wild stallion. I was really rooting for those kids. Buzz, your girlfriend. Woof. I don't think so. I don't think so. Eat that, you little trout sniffer. Trout sniffer. Say the line, Buzz. Trout sniffer. Yay! But don't worry, we do at least get an update on Kevin McAllister, who seemingly now runs a home security service, which means the Home Alone logo is canon in the Home Alone universe, which is weird. But anyway, what's Kevin been up to? When I was a kid, my family went on vacation. We forgot my little brother, Kevin. Twice. He called in the 289 to mess with me. The idiot does it every year. So still an asshole. Yeah, that's good. Another return from the original is the music, which way? I mean, it seems pretty basic, but still, it's nice to hear it. It always is. But they also have an homage to Angels with Dirty Faces, which was in the first two films. And it's got a sci-fi reboot and a very on-the-nose line. I'm gonna give you to the count of ten to get your ugly, yellow, no-good keys. Oh, this is garbage. I don't know why they're always trying to remake the classics. Never as good as the originals. If you're gonna put a line like that in there, Make your movie better, god damn you, Joe and Orion! It's your spewing mouth, you animal! I think one of the ways the film succeeds, and it, I guess it's a success, even though it kind of hurts it as far as it being a Home Alone film, is that you actually do care about this couple. Rob Delaney and Ellie Kemper have very good chemistry, and there's even a few scenes that you get emotionally invested in them. Home sweet home. You could do it, Eddie Kemper. You, you rob that kid and you save your house for your family. Okay, so let's talk about the trap. So they break into the house. <laughs> they break into the actual house. And immediately they're just morons. Like, they crash the car straight away. I don't think it had anything to do with Max. I mean, Max is still up there celebrating. He must just be like, oh yeah, they're idiots, yes. And then straight away, Jeff, Rob Delaney, just eats milk and cookies because he thinks they're for Santa. Dude, you're not Santa. 
why would you eat the milk and cookies outside? And he's like, the milk is hot, and that's awful. But his wife isn't much better, because his wife gets lit on fire, it's a long story, and goes for a tap when she could have just put her feet in the snow. And then she's like, oh, it's cold and wet. Oh, really, is it? Is it? Is it because you soaked yourself with a tap? I will say, one of my concerns before was that the films couldn't be as brutal with the traps, but I was kind of surprised. There was actually a few traps in there that looked pretty... Oh, pretty rough, to be honest. Orange stripe, center pocket. <laughs> Ooh, that did not sound right. But then there's dumb ones, like a VR one. Um, that's very involved, and he didn't, he didn't notice anything strapped to his head, I guess. Okay, he's probably massively concussed since you shot him in the head with that billiard ball. I will say, to the film's credit, the traps are actually pretty decent, certainly much better than I expected. There's a one involving a trampoline that feels quite feasible and fun. And I will say my best trap in the film is involving a yoga ball, which, you know, maybe could have looked a bit better, but I think the idea behind it is pretty strong. So that's my favorite trap in the film. Oh no, you hit me with the incredibly soft yoga ball. <laughs> So where's the resolution in all this? Once they find out Max actually is home alone, they let him stay with them until his mother gets back from Tokyo. But what about the doll and the house? Well, Jeff's brother and sister-in-law are staying with them and one of their kids has the doll. <gasps> but he doesn't know how valuable it is and it's about to hit the floor! Oh, Max got it. Okay, cool, right. The house is saved. Max is a hero. Okay, cool. One year later, they're having a big old Christmas dinner together and ha ha ha! And oh, orange soda! Oh, is he gonna give it to him this time? <gasps> oh, they did, yeah, okay, cool. Uh, yeah, okay. I think another reason the movie just flounders and fails is that it's not funny. There's a lot of funny people in this movie, but there's some just terrible jokes here. And I'm not just saying this as an adult. I think there's very few jokes the kids would even like. I mean, I, as a fart joke, maybe that'll get a laugh out of them. Sorry, I'm sorry. But aside from that, there's jokes about the 90s? Did somebody call the house? No, because we don't have a landline, Stu. Nobody has a landline anymore. Yes, Stu, nobody has a landline anymore because it's not 1993. What's your next idea? Should I beep him after I listen to the new MC Hammer joint? Okay, that didn't land. What about... Uh, this, is a, this is a good comedic observation. Ready? What, did you know it's not actually Frankenstein? We all call him Frankenstein, but it's actually Frankenstein's monster. You almost look like Frankenstein. Oh, you mean uh, Frankenstein's monster. Frankenstein is the doctor, FYI. John Hughes would be spinning in his grave. Oh, mommy. <laughs> okay, maybe he actually wouldn't mind the fart joke, but... Actually, yeah, he's probably just in his grave, I guess. Which... That's probably good, right? Well, not good, but like that, that's where he should be, I guess. There's one joke in here, and I don't even know if I can call it a joke. That annoys me more than any of them. Watch this. Right, so obviously what they wanted to do was show Max speeding along outside. When we went to be like, what? How's he doing that? That's so cool. And then cutting out to say, oh, he's had a treadmill. But they showed it so you can see it to TV screen straight away. So you just ruined the joke immediately. I can fix that now. Was that funny? No? Well... Okay, then it fits right into the movie. Oh, I nearly forgot to do best reaction like I always do. Um, I guess I'll give it to the old guy, who pretty much kind of took the words out of my mouth for this review. Sounds like garbage. Herman, no, none of that. What does? The stink. Home Sweet Home Alone is not the worst Home Alone film. It's better than Home Alone 4. Maybe better than one of the other ones as well, but it's disposable, forgettable, maybe the most soulless of all of them. It probably really speaks to the time that it's just shallow fan service and empty nostalgia. It pays homage to the original without doing it in any meaningful way. And while I will give it points for trying to do something different, it kind of ruins what we would want out of a Home Alone film in doing so. The performances are good, but there's nothing really they can do because they're surrounded by so much stuff that doesn't work. I would say surprisingly the traps are more brutal and effective than expected, but obviously the film's fatal flaw of making 
the bad guy is sympathetic, means we don't want to see him go through the traps. So it's a real mixed bag. And not like a mixed bag of like good stuff and bad stuff. A mixed bag of mostly shit and also maybe a little bit of piss. And neither of those are good things. I, I'm, I'm, I don't have anything else to say about this film. Or Home Alone. Haven't, haven't we all said what we needed to say with Home Alone by now? Six films. Six. Please don't make any more Home Alone films. I'm begging you. No more. I'm done. Okay? I'm done. Yeah, I'm done.